Hello everyone. A couple of weeks ago I did a video about what's in my pack for a winter day hike. And I got a couple of comments and even a couple of private messages that were talking about stuff that I probably should have had in my pack uh, that I didn't. And I realized from the comments that what I didn't tell you about was what I carry in my fanny pack. So today we're going to show you what I carry in my fanny pack. What you might call a survival kit. So stay tuned. Now this is it here and I would describe this as something that's in between a PSK, a pocket survival kit, and a bob, a bug out bag. I make sure that whenever I go into a situation where I might get stuck in the wilderness, this is always with me. And it's a waist pack or a fanny pack, so it's fairly easy for me to put around my waist whenever I want to leave my camp in the wilderness or just go for a day hike like you saw me do in my previous video. But no matter what, whenever I go into the woods, this is always carried with me. Okay, first things first. This kit actually started as a pocket survival kit or PSK. And I started building it when I got the SAS or Special Air Service Survival Handbook. And in there is a beautiful chapter on building a survival kit. And the idea is it's something that you're going to make sure is small enough that you'll have absolutely no problem taking it with you into the wild so that when you do have your unexpected emergency and you're caught out in the wild, you have some basic items with you that will assist in your survival. So the SAS Survival Handbook recommended that your survival kit be placed in something the size of a cigar tin and it has things like matches, candle, ferro rod, magnifying glass, needle and thread, fishing hook and line, a compass, a light, snare wire, string saw, which is I think called a flexible saw, medical kit, pain reliever, uh, medicine for diarrhea, antihistamines, water treatment, potassium permagmate, which is used for water treatment or antifungal treatment, surgical blades, butterfly sutures, bandages, and a condom. Now, all this gets added to a pouch, which also contains a mess tin, a stove and fuel, another flashlight, flares, signaling devices, matches, a brew kit with tea and sugar, and some kind of food containing fat. And I can't forget to mention, of course, your kit needs to contain some kind of knife. It was a very comprehensive starting point for building a survival kit and I know from watching a lot of YouTube videos this kit has sort of morphed into the um, Altoids survival kit which there is just a ton of videos online and so I just wanted to let you know that I was building those kind of kits about 20 years ago but eventually it morphed into this my waste pack and I'll give you some reasons why as we go through what's in this waste pack. Okay, the first thing I'll show you is what's on the outside of my waste pack. And dangling on one side for easy access is a full size bushcraft knife. This is a Moira Companion. Uh, in the future, this is most likely going to change, but for now, that's what I've carried on the outside of this fanny pack. And the point here is it's a full-size knife. If I'm going to be out here um, trying to do bushcraft, build shelter, um, create fire, maybe collect food, I want a full-size 
knife uh, with me at all times. Not a little folder or mini knife because if I had my choice if I was going to be stuck out here I would definitely choose a full-size knife and so that's why I carry it. And this definitely will not fit in a pocket survival kit. On the other side I have my container for my my collapsible water bottle which right now is inside my jacket trying to keep it from freezing but that goes there I also have a mini pocket tool right here which has some useful items on here probably the mini saw is what I use most often for little bushcraft projects and then this pouch here would normally contain my bear spray in the summertime uh, but I don't need that obviously in the winter time so right now it's empty but again on the outside of my fanny pack always with me uh, very easy to access and then of course right here I have a gift from Giza of a button compass and a thermometer which currently is letting me know that we are in minus 12 Celsius conditions. So that's it for the outside of my pack. Now let's go inside. Now the first thing to come out of the inside of my fanny pack is a pair of sturdy work gloves and that's just because they happen to be sitting on top but if I'm going to start a bushcraft project I want to have these handy. But really the most important thing to come out of the fanny pack right away, especially if I'm going off trail, is a full size Silva compass. And on that same lanyard is a Fox 40 classic whistle for signaling. And the reason I want a full size compass is because I want something that's going to be accurate for navigating in these wilderness conditions and I have it so that it comes off of my lanyard very easily and I can put it on a, a map, a topographical map to help me navigate. The next thing to come out of my fanny pack is a GSI stainless steel cup and in there is a Ziploc container uh, full of some comfort items and my first aid kit. Again, quick access right on the top of my pack and we'll go into those items in more detail but obviously the stainless steel cup is something that I can use to boil water to make it safe and it's big enough that it's going to give me some useful amount of water uh, if I'm ever in a survival situation. I have another Ziploc bag here which is my fire kit which contains items that will help me build a fire out here in the wilderness and make shelter if I need to. Next is a water resistant, not waterproof, flashlight. A length of 550 paracord. I have two meters here. Snap light stick. And if you'll notice, this light stick is white. It seems to be very hard to find these things in white. And then I have a mirror, which could be used for signaling, but most often I'm using it to help me diagnose problems in my face area and dig forest crap out of my eye. Then I have a large garbage bag, which can be used as a temporary shelter. I can put it over my head, uh, protect me from the rain, uh, or I can unfold it and turn it into a makeshift tarp. But most often what I'm using this for is carrying other people's garbage out of the woods. So I use that quite often, unfortunately. I have a collection of extra Ziploc bags, one of which is big enough for me to put my camera equipment in if I'm ever in a really wet, damp, rainy situation. I have a very small fishing kit in here. It has a length of 24 pound test fishing line, about 20 meters of that. Some small hooks, some small jig baits, and three eye screws, which I can then screw into a stick and fashion a bushcraft fishing pole. In the back pocket, uh, I have a notebook and pencil. That's most often to create notes uh, about various things that have gone wrong that I want to fix when I get home. 
after my trip. Uh, in the back of that I have a couple of pieces of ripstop nylon repair tape to repair my equipment if I ever need to in the field and a Fresnel lens which if you've watched my videos you've seen me use to create fire. A small piece of tin foil which I can fashion into a lid for my GSI stainless steel cup if I want to keep the forest crap from blowing in there while I'm trying to boil water. I also have this folding saw. It's actually a dollar store folding saw and it fits inside the pack quite nicely and I use it all the time for little bushcraft projects. The point here is it's not a string saw as the SAS survival handbook suggests. I don't know it was a Coglin string saw that I originally used in my uh, pocket survival kit and it was awful. I don't know if there are better uh, string saws or flexible saws out there but it was useless and very quickly I decided that if I was in a survival situation I would want to have with me a good sized saw to help me do the various bushcraft things that I'm going to need to do like prepare firewood and build a shelter. Now you also would have noticed stuffed in my uh, cup were a couple of food items. Um, this is uh, a meat stick the Great Canadian Meat Company, uh, Pepperette, and I choose this particular brand because it does not have MSG in the list of ingredients, and I like that. And I also have a trail bar with me, but the point is, I always want to make sure that I have food with me wherever I go in the wilderness. Quite frequently, you will also see me with a snack bag full of GORP, which I think stands for a good old raisin and peanuts, but you can put together your own collection of goodies that you like to eat, and this will often be in there as well. Okay, let's break down what's in my comfort kit inside that Ziploc bag. I have a collection of assorted bandages, just two or three. They're easy access. I if I cut myself, I don't want to be trying to get into that first aid kit to get a band-aid to stop the bleeding. I want it really easily accessible. I also have some butterfly sutures just in case I make a mistake with my survival knife while I'm out here. It's entirely possible, so I've got some butterfly sutures. I don't have a needle and thread to stitch myself up because I don't know how to do that and it's highly unlikely that I will ever try to do that. The butterfly sutures, however, is something that I can do to close a wound if I need to. I have some sting relief pads, and I have those in there handy also because almost every year I get stung by yellow jackets when I'm walking through the woods and I disturb one of their nests. So I like to have those handy. I have some antiseptic wipes in case I do uh, get a scrape quite often as I'm going through the woods. I'll get a scrape or a cut just because the woods are just sharp sticks and a whole mess of hurt all the time. A brew kit which has some tea, sugar, salt, and pepper in case I want to make some of the swamp water that I've collected on the trail taste a little bit better when I'm trying to hydrate. I have a small coffee filter. Um, this is uh, the one cup filters that I use to make my coffee bags and I have a video about that and I'll put a link in this video if you want to see uh, how those work but I keep a small filter just to help me uh, filter out some of the cruddies that will get into your water when you're uh, collecting water in the wild and then of course this is where I have the condom and that is an interesting item it seems to be very difficult to find non-lubricated condoms and you're going to want a non-lubricated variety if you're going to use it for your survival kit but it's in there as an emergency uh, water bag it will hold about one liter of water as an emergency container I have some antacid because quite often I am suffering from acid indigestion out here from some of the food that I eat and so I like to have some relief handy. Some facial tissue which is used for toilet paper out here in the wild. 
I have a bunch of water treatment tablets. Especially in the summertime, you're going to go through at least four liters of water a day. So I like to have a bunch and I like to have them easily accessible in my comfort kit so that I will definitely have enough treated water to drink when I'm out on a day hike uh, or obviously if I'm in a survival situation. So I don't want to carry one or two like I see in some of these pocket survival kits because I know I'm going to need quite a number of them if I'm going to be out here for a couple of days. I have some moist towelettes and that's just more of a comfort item to help me clean up uh, a little bit after I go to the washroom out here in the wild. I have some pain relievers handy in that little container. I have some diarrhea pills. Again, handy in case the water that I'm drinking turns out to be a little rough on my system. Some antihistamines because I seem to have a pretty nasty reaction to a lot of bug bites. One or two bug bites, I seem to be okay, but if I get a lot of bug bites, I like to have some antihistamine on hand to deal with the reaction that I have. Okay, next, I'm gonna break down what I have in my fire kit. And I have that in a Ziploc bag, and I have some of the items inside smaller Ziploc bags inside there because I wanna make sure that if I'm drowned in a rainstorm, that those items are going to be bone dry because they're going to be my go-to items in order to build a fire. Most of the time, I'm collecting it out here in the wild. There's plenty of items if you know what to look for to help you build a fire. But if I'm rained out, just drenched, that's where I'll get my items to help me start my fire. And as I go through the wilderness during various times of the year, I collect items that I know are going to be hard to find, say for example now in the winter time, and store them in that Ziploc container. And that's a good practice to get into. Uh, so I always have that with me to collect items as well. So in there I have some tinder, some milkweed fluff, candles in the form of the amazing cotton ball. And again, if you're not familiar with the amazing cotton ball, I love these as a fire starting item. I have a couple in this kit and I will put a link in the description down below to the amazing cotton ball video. I have a couple of Sousaville fireballs in there. I have some strike anywhere matches in this uh, film container. I have an extra bowstring for my bow drill kit. Quite often I am breaking those as I practice the friction fire method so I have an extra bowstring in my fire kit at all times. I have some jute twine for shelter building. I like the jute twine because it's biodegradable so I know that if I build a shelter and for some reason leave it up uh, it will biodegrade and eventually disappear. I have a little piece of chaga for fire lighting or more likely now for tea. A bag of fatwood which also has some birch bark and little chunks of pine resin that I've collected off the pine trees. Some shaved cedar bark and a pencil sharpener. Now the pencil sharpener is in there as a little tip that I got from one of the videos I watched to help me very easily shave that fat wood into Maya dust, sort of. And the Maya dust that I've created I keep in this little plastic container for easy access. Okay, the waste pack is almost completely empty now except for one zippered pocket inside there that I keep some essential items. And the first one is this custom fire steel obtained from Reapers Outdoors. And again, I'll put a link down below to his channel if you want to talk to him. This fire steel is fantastic. Still going strong. I love it. And I keep that in my zippered pocket inside there for fire lighting, of course. I have a clipper refillable butane lighter. If you think about it, it's a little tiny fire steel and striker with fuel built to work together to create instant fire anywhere. It's a must have for your kit. I have a little piece of limestone that has a pocket where there used to be a fossil and I use that as my handhold now for the bow drill fire. Have some extra safety pins. They're self-explanatory. Another tiny multi-tool which I like to carry with me because it has a pair of pliers. I have a small zippered pouch that contains my firecrackers, otherwise known as my bear scares. 
along with a bear banger and I carry the bear banger and the launcher because it is also good for flares and I carry one flare in that little um, container for signaling. I have a Smith knife sharpening system and that's for maintaining my knife while I'm in the field. It's very important to have a sharp knife and you need a way to do that. I have a roll of dental floss, some lip balm with SPF 30 sunscreen embedded in it and quite often I'm using that as a nose coat especially in the summertime so that I don't get a sunburned nose but that's also handy for chapped lips. Last but not least I have this really neat solar powered night light. It's great for hanging in my hammock when I'm hammock camping or hanging in the top of my tent. It recharges in a couple of hours of daylight and gives me an hour or so of light at night. Nice part about that is if my main flashlight or my headlamp dies on me because the batteries have run down, this will continually recharge over and over again. So that's what's in my survival kit, waste bag, EDC, bug out bag, PSK, and just before I finish up, I want to mention one more thing that we all carry with us whenever we're out in the wild, and that's what's behind our eyes, between our ears, and on our shoulders, our brain. And the beautiful part about that is you can pack it full of all kinds of stuff. It doesn't take any extra weight, and that is probably the most essential tool you're going to have with you out in the wild. So feel free to cram it full of all kinds of knowledge that's going to help you survive in the wild. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you very much for joining me today and I want you all to make sure that you're safe whenever you're out in the wild. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.